All right. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. You are watching some channel where we talk about movies and videos and stuff. So today what we're going to talk about is the Clone Wars Season 7, the final season. What did we think? And as you can see, Teresa is super excited to be I'm here. very excited She's to be here. She's very, very excited to be here. To talk about Star Wars. It's a very happy subject these days. It is. Uh, yes. <clears throat> so I want to get Teresa's reaction. You guys can probably guess what I'm going to say. I may have already said it on Twitter, and if I haven't, then this will be all brand new and exciting for you so you're just gonna be so excited so Teresa what were your thoughts overall just don't don't reference specific episodes just say good bad mediocre whatever go the, the, my problem with TV today is I feel like every single thing becomes filler where a writer doesn't really have a story to tell so they just come up with things that just you know fill in that run time or fill in their day at work they can punch in their time card and go out go away and go out because they don't really have anything to say and I hope that wouldn't be the case with this season. I didn't think it was going to be in some instances, but that's kind of what it did, what it ended up being. And there are some good moments that I'll talk about when we get more into details in the Star Wars, the Clone Wars. But overall, I felt like... I felt like it was a waste of time. I felt like 12 episodes, they should not have ordered 12 episodes. They clearly did not have the inspiration or any story any story ideas for a 12 episode Clone Wars finale. Even if they had just given them a movie, I'm curious if they just gave them the task of here, do, do a finale movie. I'm curious if they would have changed if they knew we're just doing this one like an hour and a half long movie or something like that. I'm curious if they if their mindset would have changed. Otherwise, uh, again, before we get into the details, there's a lot of episodes, uh, one episode in particular where nothing happens. There's just stuff, and I wouldn't even consider it filler, stuff where it wastes your time because nothing's going to happen and it's not really doing anything with the characters. I mean, the entire first four episodes, I think, were utterly wasted and went nowhere. But mm -hmm. um, Now, let me just jump in here because my, uh, my view on this series obviously is very similar. I had very high hopes for this season because they sold it to us as this is going to be what we've all been waiting for because this is what people who watched the Clone Wars series were dying for and excited for to see how Attack of the Clones connected to Revenge of the Sith, especially when we had all these new characters that we decided that we really enjoyed um, and, and what was going to happen to them. We also had, uh, you know, different little missing pieces and stuff because with Revenge of the Sith, you jump into this this kind of golden age of Obi-Wan and Anakin fighting and enjoying themselves and having a good time. We wanted to see more of that. I wish that we could have seen more of that in Attack of the Clones or, you know, and so we didn't get that and we wanted that in, in the Clone Wars and we did get some of that in the Clone Wars. And then we wanted ultimately to see how it connected to Revenge of the Sith. And they didn't do that. They had to end after season six and they didn't actually wrap up the series. So Disney said, we're gonna wrap up the series, here we go. And we're gonna make it connect to Revenge of the Sith and my immediate reaction is, oh my gosh, well they've been doing season after season after season. It's only supposed to be three years in between those two movies. So we're just gonna get a whole block season of here's what happened immediately before, here's what happened during, and here's a little bit of what happened after to connect it to Rebels afterwards, because that's the show that comes next. And they didn't do that. Eight out of the 12 episodes were a complete waste. They had nothing to do with the ultimate goal of getting to the Revenge of the Sith plot. They just had four episodes to remind us that we had affection for the clones. They had four episodes that were a complete waste and they went nowhere other than to explain here's what Ahsoka was doing directly before she got involved with the Revenge of the Sith plot. Nothing! <laughs> nothing! Nothing! Absolutely nothing! And then they shoehorn like these Mandalorian characters in to connect it to the Mandalorian and then Ahsoka sees Anakin for the last time in the first episode of that four-part arc of those final four episodes and then that's it and then the rest of it is just time wasted little dialogue lots of music lots of animated like to show off hey we can animate stuff and we're like oh yeah and we knew they that they did seem to really put in work into the animation because with that scene we're getting into details and spoilers now but and that scene We've with already, Ahsoka, we so with far Ahsoka and Darth Maul fighting, they actually did motion capture, complete motion capture um, sword fighting to do that scene. Like, oh, you put the effort in there, but you didn't put the effort into your writing. 
That seems to be the problem with pretty much everything coming from Disney or any movie that I've seen. There's no effort being put into the writing outside of, oh, can we social justice warrior this? Can we add yeah, this they, little political talking point there? That, it's they like, buy people who have, like, um, who have skills of, like, I know how to work computers, I know how to render this, but they don't get people who actually have imagination for the writing. Since we got into Or details, even care about it. We don't care about it, but since we, you were getting into details Go there, ahead. can I talk a little bit about the details throughout the season and what made it bad, the couple things that I liked? Go ahead. So, um, the things that were bad, so the first four-part arc was an arc about, um, the clones finding I'm one of their old friends who we recognize from the series, Echo, and I thought, oh, this, this might be really good, but then it was four episodes of there, and it was just basically them fighting and running yeah. and it got nowhere and then it led nowhere in the rest of the season. Finding Echo meant nothing. Yes. Do we even remember that? Um, yeah. Uh, then we got an episode with Ahsoka and I understand why they would feel the need to have an episode, uh, several episodes that explain Ahsoka's mindset going forward, but they just do it in the worst way possible where she meets these two weird haired sisters and they do essentially nothing. There was an episode where they literally get captured, they run around and then wind up the exact same place as they were in the first place of the episode. I couldn't believe they wasted their time. Yeah. And even because I find just so many review sites these days just chill for the shows, whatever show it is. There were review sites. They, I saw they got 402 for that episode. I was surprised. Well, they went at it for that episode. That was the worst episode in the entire series from a writing perspective. So then I, I understand why they would set up what Ahsoka's mindset is at this point, but they didn't do it well. So then we finally get to the last four episodes and I'm like, okay, can you please be good? Are you please gonna finally get to the story you wanted to tell and so we were so excited for that first of that final four to come out and I was so excited I was I, I was running around crazy I'm so excited because it, this is the first time that Ahsoka and Anakin have seen each other since she left the Jedi Order and we really wanted to see how the connection to Revenge of the Sith happened and it was just a complete and other disappointment. There were so many things that we wanted to see. We wanted to see, does Ahsoka interact with Obi-Wan after Order 66 happens? Does she know that Luke and Leia exist? Does she know what happened to Senator Amidala? I mean, they were friends. She might want to know, oh yeah, hey, your friend died, but... I mean, we, we don't didn't, get any we, of that. Like, even, uh, this, is, this is my complaint. One of the things that they tried to do was amplify the relationship between Ahsoka and Rex. And that was okay with me because Rex has known Ahsoka since she was 14 years old. He's come to respect her as uh, a military commander because she worked in the military with, you know, with the and Jedi. And they do work together in Rebels, which is a tie-in to that. Yeah, and so I understand, like, that was nice. And to, to have a little bit more emotion between those two was a nice touch. But that's really the only thing we get. After Anakin and Obi-Wan leave, they're basically out of the picture. And she has no interaction. She has one conversation with Obi-Wan over a hologram. And that's it. Like, they're, they're out of the picture. She has no idea what happened to any of them after Order 66. She has no idea what happened with the Senator. She has no idea what, that Luke and Leia are even a thing. And that's kind of what we all wanted to see. We all wanted to see how much does she know. Well, we have the answer. Nothing. Basically, that's what we all know, too, is nothing after this season. Well, uh, here's... Here, I'll, I want to mention one little thing I did like, and then I'll get into how I would have fixed this. I, I did actually like the scene at the end with Darth Vader, and I know it was annoying to people because they're like, you know, we just wasted time. We didn't get anything that we wanted. But I liked it because, um, for those of you who don't know, Darth Vader comes and he finds the wreckage of the ship. That's basically what the last episode the ship was. That, the ship that Ahsoka Yeah, it's on. Ahsoka and Rex escaping that ship, and it's a big set action piece, and I don't think it should have been. And it wasn't badly done. I'm just like, you're wasting time when this should be based on story and character, not action. Yeah. But he finds the ship, and he finds them with Ahsoka's, um, basically her branding. Yeah. And he finds the lightsaber he gave her, and it's kind of like this semi, you can't really tell with Darth Vader's mask on, it's this semi moment of recollection yeah. or uh, emotion, Not, we don't know if it's emotion but recollection that he's finally found where Ahsoka was, mm -hmm. even if he wasn't looking for her, and the reason I like that as a final scene for the series is the Clone Wars beyond being about the clones was really about Anakin and Ahsoka, mm -hmm. and that's how it started, so I like that being the way it ends. That's fine the way it ends, it's just that, and it, I don't think that scene would feel like a waste if it hadn't been for the 12 episodes of waste 
least that we yes, had prior yes, to that. I would have done. I would have had it be only four episodes long or so. Mm-hmm. I would have said, I would have had it start like it did, but I would have had it them, if you're going to have them capture Darth Maul and tie into Rebels, I would have had them go through that very quickly. Mm-hmm. I would have had Order 66 happen as like the ending of the second episode. Or even the beginning of the second episode. Or even episode. the beginning of the second episode. Because what we really wanted was the crossover between the movie and what happens during and after the movie. We didn't want all this lead up and all this build up of just garbage. Yeah, and I would have had it be maybe more of a struggle for Ahsoka to save Rex, and after that I would like to have more emotion between the characters. Mm-hmm. Like, Rex is losing people who were his brothers all this time, and he has to realize that. Yeah. And he's basically... And they tried to do that, but it just wasn't... There wasn't any impact. And I know that this is supposed to be a kid's show, but The Clone Wars does not have the excuse of being a kid's show with the kind of stuff they put into it. What I was going to say is they should have put more conflict and a reco- and um, within Rex to see that his whole world is changing, and he kind of just treats it as if it's another... Another um, an- another adventure for them to go on. Really, there's some moments of emotion, mm-hmm. but and I would have had Ahsoka. I want to see more how it affects her. I know that she divorced herself from the Jedi, but this should affect her more to see that she was brought into this um, war. This was and she grew up within the Jedi. Like she's friends yeah. with all these. So people. how is she gonna feel about that? I would have liked to explore how she felt about having all these people, like Plo Koon, who found her on the planet killed. I want her to be. I would like to see her concern over. Anakin and find out what happened there. How would I, how would there was done no it? yeah there was no emotional connection with anything. There was no development in that area, and so all of the emotion was stripped down. All we get is like these pictures and these vague, you know. What I would have done. Sound effects. What whatever. I would have done. Go ahead. Is Ahsoka and Rex run away and they get off the planet. Maybe they're rescued by Yoda and Obi Wan, and they meet up with Yoda and Obi Wan on the ship that they're in at the end of Revenge of the Sith. And we don't do the same scenes over again, but we can have kind of a debriefing when maybe Obi Wan tells Ahsoka the truth from a certain point of view that we that thought a that Sith Lord named yes. Darth Vader came and killed Anakin and killed That's the Senator. That's what we Senator. thought was going to happen. Yeah, they should have done that, and then then we that can have so clever. Then we can have some kind of closure where maybe, and this would be the complete final episode that's just done to wrap this stuff up, where Ahsoka and Rex kind of decide their new path um, and what they're going to do next as Obi Wan and Yoda go their separate ways, mm-hmm. and we can have that lead into Rebels, and then we have the scene with Darth Vader in the end. Yeah. And then we have lots of fan service and lots of satisfaction and it would have been so much better and I don't think it was that hard to do. I thought of this on the it spot. It was very hard to do. You don't understand. Here's why it's ho- so hard for them though. Here's why it's so hard for Disney to make good shows and good movies based on characters that were beloved prior to this moment. They're not necessarily fans. That's the biggest problem is these people that are making these things are not actually fans of the show. There's a fan here in there but clearly the fans do not have control the fandom does not have control over this franchise the people that actually cared about it don't have control over this franchise and that's why it's just so disappointing to see there's there's no substance to these shows anymore or these characters all it is is special effects and sound effect like the back the ambiance stuff you can be taught in a class not exactly. stuff that tag takes talent i mean that's so that's going too far i'm just saying that when you are a writer i usually find out with people you have to have talent first and then you go can do the learning but when you are a uh, you know it's like it's like learning math it's like learning the writing and when you learn computers and stuff it's a very um very factual Yeah. All you have to do is punch in a bunch of buttons, and of course you have to have skill at doing that. You have to have skill at doing anything, but it's... It's another example of the, the left brain, right brain phenomenon of some people are better off doing the creative, interesting side of things, and other people are better at doing... Punching in the numbers. Punching in the numbers, being factual, being correct, being accurate. Both of those things come to play when you're making movies and TV shows and whatnot, but they seem to have the wrong people d- doing the wrong jobs. Yeah, I would have rather a Clone Wars season with less less great animation and a better story. Exactly. We do need to wrap this up because uh, we're running out of time. I wanted to say one last thing Go I will say positively. If, if we were to imagine that the Clone Wars tied into Revenge of the Sith in canon at all, we always talked about how um, um, what what happens to Ahsoka. If she died, Anakin would probably be upset. And in, when we opened in Revenge of the Sith, he seems kind of in a good mood. Well, he's kind of in a good mood in that first episode. He's like, uh, oh, it's all coming together now. She's going to help us again. We're all a big family again. So I, that that was a fine tie-in for me. It yeah, just that episode was pretty much the only episode that I thought was really 
good. That and and I didn't mind the Echo storyline. It's just that it never came back. Like it, I thought that it was being set up so that okay, now at, towards the end of the season we're gonna have these new clones that were introduced and Echo in his new life come back and be the clones that rebel or something like that. But there's none of that, and they set us up for it and they didn't do it. And obviously these characters aren't in. Uh, they're not in Rebels either, to my knowledge, and so they were just throwaways? What's going on? Anyway, it's frustrating, but we do need to wrap it up because- TV and movies are bad now. Bye. <laughs> That's <laughs> Teresa's moral of the story. So if you guys enjoyed this review or any of my other videos, please like the videos, subscribe to this channel, ring the bell so that you get your notifications, because that's what everybody says and I just keep saying it, and I will talk to you guys on the next video. Bye.